So welcome back guys to another video and today I'm doing a review on a Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 out now on all platforms and honestly this game came out as fast as it was announced I've never seen anything release this big in the gaming industry and for some of you folks who are unfamiliar with the Bloodstained series it's pretty much a love letter spiritual successor to the Castlevania series with what we saw with the Kickstarter from Koji Igarashi with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and Curse of the Moon that came out a couple years ago which was a kickstarting tier goal which was an 8-bit throwback to old school Castlevania so this sequel, is it as surprising as finally roast beef behind the wall or will it leave fans crying bloody tears? Let's talk about it. When it comes to the story, you're once again following the journey of Zengetsu the Demon Slayer, who is accompanied by some new faces. Dominique, who appeared as the shopkeeper in Ritual of the Night, also a new character, a sharpshooter named Robert, and one of the biggest surprises was a corgi named Hachi, who controls a steampunk style mech. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2, like its predecessor, is stage-based as opposed to the Metroidvania style that honestly is a breath of fresh air, since this genre seems to be oversaturated in terms of a lot of indie titles. The controls are solid and easy to pick up, but it can be very hard to master, cementing that retro flair that Intel Crates was going for. Now Zengetsu is your basic sword slasher with a nice horizontal attack. Dominique has her weapon, which is a spear that really gave me some Eric Licardi vibes from Castlevania Bloodlines, and a Scrooge McDuck Shovel Knight feel being able to bounce off enemies with her spear. Robert, while being the weakest in terms of health, being the sharpshooter gives you a huge advantage on long range combat and some major firepower. Also a pretty cool Ninja Gaiden style wall jump. Hachi is pretty much the tank of the team. He can step on spikes, he doesn't slip on ice, and he has a pretty powerful glide jump and even an invincible sub weapon. But he's pretty clunky and really not my favorite out of the bunch. Now you can switch between characters with the click of the shoulder button and each character has something to offer in terms of beating the stages. Once a character is dead though, they're gone for the remainder of the stage. There's always a formula on who to use and who to spare to progress through the game. Curse of the Moon 2 also has a two-player local co-op, which sounds like a crazy mess, and honestly, it kind of is. But once you and your party members get the hang of everything, it's kind of cool. I just wish it offered online co-op. So first off, I'm going to talk about the things I like and don't particularly like about Curse of the Moon 2 before I give an initial score. Uh, first off, the things I like about it, I think the game looks good. It looks like an authentic NES title with the sprite colors and you know the, the macabre kind of steampunk industrial look. It looks like it's a coherent with the Bloodstained series, like we have a Bloodstained universe now. And, you know, I can see this being inside of an NES console and playing on a CRT. Aside from the parallax scrolling, they hit the nail on the head to make this look like an 8-bit style adventure. Also, the game has tons of post-gaming content. I mean, for 15 bucks in 8 stages, you're getting a lot of content within itself, but you also have boss rush mode. You also have alternate paths that you can go through, and characters to unlock from the previous game. So if you want to go back and play Curse of the Moon 2 as Mariam, your wish is their command. But getting into the things that I don't particularly like about Curse of the Moon 2, um, first off, it's the soundtrack. I don't feel like the soundtrack is that memorable, which is kind of disheartening because when I think of Castlevania, I think of, you know, really challenging levels and really memorable music. And I've played this game now for a couple of days, and none of the soundtrack got stuck in my head. Like, not a single tune I found myself humming at work or anything like that, which is kind of disheartening because I love the music for Ritual of the Night and Curse of the Moon, but this this entry, they kind of missed the bar on that one. Now, there's two difficulties to Curse of the Moon 2. There's Veteran Mode and Casual Mode. Uh, veteran Mode is going to be your standard Castlevania experience with limited lives, limited checkpoints, and of course that knockback feature that we all absolutely hate. Where casual mode, you have unlimited lives, more checkpoints, and they've improved the fact that if you get hit by a projectile, you're not going to be knocked back into a pitfall, and I actually really like that. So if you play this game in casual, I will not judge you on that merit alone. But with that being said, I feel like the game has some really huge difficulty and balancing issues. 
Uh, you know, Curse of the Moon was a love letter to Castlevania 3. There's no doubt about it with the switching characters and a lot of the characters made you think of, you know, Grant and Cypher and Alucard from Castlevania 3, where this one, I feel like they focus a little too much on switching characters. So much so that I found myself, you know, trying to control Hachi, I would die, and then I almost had to start the whole level all over again because I had no way to resurrect him because I didn't have a resurrection spell for Dominique and I couldn't bring him back. and. There was certain parts that I couldn't get to unless I had Hachi, and I feel like that's a huge game-breaking moment. I'm not a big fan of that. And you know, once you get to stage five, it goes from like, oh, this is a Castlevania game, to holy crap, this is a really, really hard game. And with that being said, I feel like that would turn off some folks. And I understand, this is supposed to be a retro game, it's supposed to be unforgiving, but this isn't 1987 anymore. There are some liberties that they could have definitely scaled back onto Curse of the Moon too. And you know, I don't feel like it's that much different from Curse of the Moon. Uh, I feel like a lot of levels might have been ideas from the previous game that they were like, all right, well, we'll refine it and we'll make it into a sequel. So to give this game a score, I would give it a solid six out of 10. Listen, I'm a huge Castlevania fan and a part of me really wants to love this game, but unfortunately, there are some major balancing issues that I have to address and say that I'm not a big fan of. Uh, would I recommend this game? I would recommend it on a sale. I mean, even if you're a huge Castlevania fan and you don't mind spending 15 bucks, I do feel like you're getting a lot for that price, but it's just not as good. It's not as good as Curse of the Moon, and that's pretty unfortunate. I hope to see, you know, a Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 3, and I'm hoping that a lot of these kind of, you know, problems get addressed and fixed, and I would love to see, you know, two-player co-op as you know, online, I'd love to see it more refined. I feel like they really have something special with the co-op uh, option for the Bloodstained series. So I'd love to see that more. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to talk about it. I know some of my opinions are very different from others, so I'd love to discuss it with you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, but also hit the bell so you're notified on all future videos that come out on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, happy gaming.